we are still dealing with one dimensional flows except that now our focus is on the circle so we will now be dealing with flows on the circle rather than on flows on the line so let's get started so far we have considered the equation x dot is equal to f of x and this equation was visualized as a vector field on the line. We now consider theta dot is equal to f of theta which corresponds to a vector field on a circle. So theta is a point on the circle and theta dot is the velocity vector at that point which follows theta dot is equal to f of theta. Here are some notes. The circle is one dimensional just like the line but we have a new property. By flowing in one direction a particle can eventually return to its starting place. Thus, in effect, periodic solutions actually become possible. In other aspects, flows on the circle are actually quite similar to flows on the line. Now let's consider an example. Sketch the vector field on the circle corresponding to theta dot is equal to sine theta. We first determine the fixed points by putting theta dot is equal to zero. The fixed points are at theta star is equal to zero and theta star is equal to pi. So we plot the circle and highlight theta star is equal to zero and theta star is equal to pi. Now observe that sine theta is greater than zero on the upper semicircle. So theta dot is greater than zero and hence the flow will be counterclockwise. The flow will be clockwise on the lower semicircle as theta dot is less than zero. So the flow is counterclockwise on the upper semicircle and the flow is clockwise on the lower semicircle. So highlighting the fixed points, one is unstable and the other is stable. So theta star is equal to zero is unstable and theta star is equal to pi is stable. So let's consider another example. Can theta dot is equal to theta be regarded as a vector field on the circle for theta in the range where theta is less than infinity greater than minus infinity. The problem is that the velocity is not uniquely defined. For example, theta is equal to 0 and theta is equal to 2 pi are two labels for exactly the same point on the circle. The first implies a velocity of zero, but the second implies a velocity of two pi. Now note that there is actually no issue in regarding theta dot is equal to theta as a vector field on the line. Theta is equal to zero and theta is equal to two pi are two different points so there is actually no conflict on how to define their velocity. So we now go ahead and offer a geometric definition. A vector field on the circle is a rule that assigns a unique velocity vector to each point on the circle. In practice, we get such vector fields 
when one has a first order system theta dot is equal to f of theta where f of theta is a real valued 2 pi periodic function i.e. f of theta plus 2 pi is equal to f of theta for all real theta. So let's consider a uniform oscillator. A point on a circle is called an angle or a phase. So example of a simple oscillator is as follows. The phase theta changes uniformly according to theta dot is equal to omega where omega is a constant. The solution is theta is equal to omega t plus theta naught. Now this is just uniform motion around the circle at an angular frequency of omega. Note that the solution is periodic. Theta t changes by 2 pi and so returns to the same point on the circle after a time capital T is equal to 2 pi pi omega. Capital T is the period of the oscillation. Note that we actually did not say anything about the amplitude of the oscillation. There is actually no amplitude variable in the system. If there were an amplitude and a phase variable, then we would be in a two-dimensional phase space. Now let's consider an example. Two runners A and B run at a steady pace around a circular track. It takes A T1 seconds to run once around the track and it takes B T2 seconds to run once around the same track. We assume that T2 is greater than T1. So note that A will in fact periodically overtake B. So the question is, how long does it take for A to lap B once? On the assumption that they actually both start together. So here's the solution. Let theta1 of t be the speed of A, then theta dot is equal to omega1, where omega1 is equal to 2 pi divided by t1. Now this says A runs at a steady pace and completes a circuit every t1 seconds. Similarly, we suppose that theta2 dot is equal to omega2, where omega2 is equal to 2 pi divided by t2 for b. The condition for a to lap b is that the angle between them has to increase by 2 pi. So if we define the phase angle, the phase difference, phi is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2, we need to find how long it takes for phi to increase by 2 pi. So that's a simple schematic of the circular track. We note down theta 1, theta 2 and the phase difference phi. So we get 
phi dot is equal to theta 1 dot minus theta 2 dot which is equal to omega 1 minus omega 2. So the phase difference phi actually increases by 2 pi after a time t lap is equal to 2 pi divided by omega 1 minus omega 2 which is equal to 1 upon t1 minus 1 upon t2 to the minus 1. This was a short lecture which Butter started on flows on the circle. We are still dealing with one dimensional flows. However, we have moved away from flows on the line to flows on the circle. So now we deal with equations of the form theta dot is equal to f of theta, where theta is a point on the circle and theta dot is the velocity vector at that point. Now there's one key difference between flows on the line and flows on the circle. And that's as follows. So imagine that you're on a circle rather than on a line. And if you keep going around, essentially what will happen is that after a point of time, you'll come back to the same point. So what will happen is that in flows on the circle, periodic solutions actually become possible. And that is a key differentiator between flows on the line and flows on the circle. And in this lecture, we started off by introducing a very simple uniform oscillator of the form theta dot is equal to omega.